Huh. Sorry. <laughs> the transition turned off my mic. So, all right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I'm MC2 and the worst rapper in the world. And uh, tonight we have a, a debate, a rematch with Austin Witsit. Uh, last week, I just want to cover this quickly, we had a, um, a special fundraiser to get some scholarship money for um, OZ. Uh, and Twali from Rwanda. He's uh, studying software engineering in uh, in a college in you in uh, Rwanda, and we raised enough money to cover his tuition for the semester. So thank you everybody that helped out. Uh, that was very awesome. He's very grateful, and we'll probably have a. Um, <clears throat> uh, I'll do a video of uh, like him uh, sometime in the future here pretty soon. So uh we have uh austin is on his uh his live stream and we're going to uh i'm going to switch over to him in a minute here but uh, thanks everybody what what we're going to do though is we're going to have um uh we're going to go for about an hour and a half and then do some live some uh, super chats and questions i'm gonna you guys are going to ask questions to him and then his uh, audience can ask questions to me we're going to trade off for the last about 30 minutes and we have you can't hear him yet but we have um planar walk as the moderator he is in the uh, the live stream with uh, with Austin, so let's see. Hold on, <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to get this ready and transition over here. So Austin, can you hear me? I don't hear him. So. Hopefully we don't get too much uh, challenge with the audio and video here. It looks like everything's fine for me. So he has, uh, there it is. All right, I can see you, um, Austin. I can't hear you yet. There we go. Oh, it's only in, uh, you're only in that ear. Maybe it's my Bluetooth. So, all right, how you doing? I'm great. Um, so did you uh, introduce stuff and we're all ready to go? So, all right, good. So uh, Planar Walk actually is going to be moderating. And, and uh, so uh, why, don't, yeah, why don't we hand it to you and uh, introduce a little bit. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to be moderating. We're going to start with a introduction. I've been notified that it's not going to be a timed um, introduction and opening statements. If if you guys get stu stuck on a topic, I'll go ahead and say, hey, just say you've been on a topic for half an hour and it's going nowhere, or maybe even 20 minutes and it's going nowhere. I'll say, hey, do you want to change topic? And yeah, so how about we get into it? Who wants to go first? Uh, so yeah, introductions and, and uh, overviews with... Uh not not presentation of evidence right right so you want to start austin or should i i don't care man i'll start it's pretty simple all observable reality shows us that this earth is not a a globe right so we come from it from the stance of we prefer observation not mathematical theoretical nonsense and conceptual abstractions that require presuppositions so what it comes down to is, you know, I do not know exactly what the earth is. I don't adhere to some definitive model. Simply, I am saying the earth is not a magic spinning ball, right? It's certainly not what it is claimed to be. And so, yeah, I just come from this from a, from an observation first, actual proof viewpoint. Um, and there's a, there's a li list of reasons for this we can get into, of course. And yeah, so the way I view it is, man, you're making a positive claim about what the earth is. You claim to know exactly what it is. And so, uh, you know, if you cannot substantiate this model you claim to adhere to, then it isn't real. That's all I got. All right, cool. Well, um, yes, uh, the all evidence points to the earth being a big old sphere. Um, little, little, uh, little flattered, a uh, little squished on the top. Um, <clears throat> And uh, I use science, and uh, I do love it when flat earthers deny science because that just shows that it's just faith, I guess, and religious claims and not logic, reasoning, uh, inductive reasoning, deductive reasoning, critical thinking. That goes out the window, I guess, um, if you're going to deny science. And I love it. I love when that happens. So I do have here with me um, a tab. 
we got to tab there. But but the official, uh, let's see, the sanctioned right there, uh, Globebusters map. And uh, because you're a Globebuster now, I got a little mini version for it for you too here. Um, based on the the video that uh, was on the channel, the Globebusters channel last year, um, talking about the Gleason's map and how brilliant it is and how it's there's a, a 60 nautical miles between each line of longitude, which means this is your map. So uh, good for that. I was going to try to get, uh, get Bob Nodell to sign uh, my copy when I was at uh, uh, the conference in Texas, but uh, I didn't catch him. So um, uh, there you go. There's my, uh, that's what I got. So planar walk. Okay. Um, so, so that's opening statements and introductions done. Just making sure. Yes. Or is it, okay. So we'll go into open discussion. Who wants to s start things off? Well, I got it. I got it. So you said that the audio was working, bro, but apparently you weren't listening. All right. So I'll repeat myself. I do not claim a definitive model of the earth. So any of your attempts to, you know, inadvertently undermine some presupposed model that I have is disingenuous and is not intellectually honest. So let's just let's just get into your religious belief, which ironically you use that term somehow. Okay, so let's just start with the basics here. You think that the Earth is this magical spinning ball. So Mattoon, can you can you in any way substantiate the claim of axial rotation? Yes, I can. Uh, if you just go to mctoon.net/spin. I'll put it in my chat here, and uh, maybe one of your mods on your side would put it into yours. There is, I think it's uh, 15 different peer-reviewed uh, studies measuring Earth's rotation using, um, uh, hold on, I'm bringing it up here, using several different techniques, not just um, not just one, but I think about six different techniques to, to measure the, the rotation of the Earth. And uh, they all measure the same. It's it's great how how much in in sync they are, considering that um, they are different techniques. So, for example, um, there is one uh, uh, called sensing Earth's rotation with a helium neon ring laser operating at 1.15 micrometers. Uh, they successfully obtained unlocked rotation sensing using a large helium neon ring laser gyroscope in the infrared regime rate based on the Earth's rotation alone. That's a nice one. Now, another one uh, is really good. They they actually measured the Chandler wobble of the Earth, which is about a 400 day wobble of the Earth using uh, using a very large um, uh, optical interferometer. But if you go down, there's other ones. There's there's one that's called detecting the Earth's rotation using superfluid phase coherence. Uh, so they use actually a liquid um, liquid uh, helium in a in a in a small um, circular or I think it's a squarish container, and they they measured the rotation of the Earth in there because uh, when it's super fluid, the helium has no friction. So that's another one. Uh, there's a mechanical yaw rate gyroscope, which is mechanical. It's not um, uh, it's not optical. Um, let's see. There's an there's a really cool one from from 1905. Yep, called an apparatus for measuring the speed of rotation of the Earth, and it uses two 50 uh, centimeter um, diameter spinning discs, each weighing 30 kilograms, so 60 kilograms uh, spinning mass at 2,400 RPM. Uh, so, and that was uh, that measured the same thing. It was suspended by a wire. So, all of those and a, a few others. So you can peruse at your okay. at your leisure. Okay. Okay, Mattoon, if you have to presuppose the the aspects of your your religion that's called begging the question. What, and, right, and what was presupposed? All of these are going to presuppose the shape. You're also... No, no, hold, hold on, not, no, specifically, what, what is it presupposing? So I can address your okay, uh, claim of presupposition. The gyroscope is presupposing the nature of light, okay, presupposing your frame of reference. And the last thing you just, you just acknowledged doesn't have an inertial frame of reference. Okay, so you're 
You're saying gyroscope and Foucault's pendulum, as far as I can tell. I don't, I don't I, even know. I didn't know. say Foucault's pendulum. Yeah, the last thing you described is the same problem as Foucault's pendulum. You do not have no, an not. inertial frame of reference. You don't need to straw man me. I did not mention a pendulum. I measure, I mentioned a spinning disc. No, you, okay, you said something was hanging? Hanging from a wire, yes. Okay, where's the wire coming from? It's connected to a gimbal at the top. Where's the gimbal connected to? The gimbal is connected to the apparatus to hold it up. Okay, what's the apparatus connected to, Mattoon? Uh, I don't, uh, could you just get to your point? I already did, you just weren't listening. There isn't an independent frame of reference. Yeah, the, the gimbal allows it to rotate freely. Okay, it's connected to something connected to the earth, McToon? It's it's allowed to rotate freely. Okay. So that doesn't that yeah. doesn't negate the the somehow that it's functioning and 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 twisting freely. So Yes, it does not have an independent frame of reference, McToon. Yeah, the 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 gimbal allows that. So can, no, could you not. could you maybe substantiate the claim that a gimbal prevents rotation somehow? You, I don't have to substantiate the fact that if something's connected to the earth, it's still connected to the earth. It's it's not connected to the earth in as much that it's allowed to rotate freely. Okay, whatever the gimbal's connected to is connected to the earth. There is no independent frame of reference, McToon. I I, I don't really care for your your words to, to in semantics. There, it's allowed to rotate. So since a, since the since it's spinning. And it's attempting to stay rigid in three-dimensional space, um, and and the gimbal allows it to rotate when it wants to rotate. It rotates when the Earth rotates. Um, actually, the Earth rotates and it stays still, so it spins. So now, if you're going to try to disprove that or dismiss that, I would ask how it is that it's rotating. Okay, I don't think you seem to be understanding. There isn't an independent frame of reference. This is, this is apparently going over your head. The, the gimbal anyway, allows it to be an independent frame of reference. Okay, McToon, this is going nowhere, bro. Every, all the listeners know what I just said. So there's got to be an inertial frame of reference, independent frame of reference, because attached to the Earth, that is not the case. Axial rotation has never been substantiated. There's 15, this is objective. All right, so you're. I, you are, thank you for dismissing to, evidence. I love it when flat earthers do that, because, you know, here's what happened a, a couple days ago. I didn't dismiss it. I addressed yeah, it. Yeah, you I did. A couple it, days ago. Somebody said, when you double down in the face of contradictory evidence and you cannot rebuttal the evidence, you're exposing the flaw in your side. I thought that was a pretty the irony, nice, the nice irony in that statement, my statement, man. But yeah. we're going to see how much you do this. Okay, so axial rotation has not been substantiated. We can just move on. McToon, have you, can you uh, substantiate the claim of curvature? Absolutely. Let's hear it. mctune.net slash R is five rigorous and detailed measurements of the rotate of the, the radius of the Earth. The rigorous, huh? Rigorous, yes. Okay, so, what's the radius of the Earth, McToon? The radius of the Earth, six thousand three hundred and seventy-six. Sorry, six million three hundred seventy-six thousand six hundred ninety meters, according to Sir George Everest. Okay, what's the radius in miles, McToon? In miles. Uh, I have it in meters. So if you, okay, if you 3,959 wanna... miles is the radius of your religion. Do you know the circumference of the yeah, religion you adhere to? 24. So uh, you, you, I do appreciate that you are uh, going with the ad homs already. Uh, it does uh, weaken your position, so thank you for that. Your opening statement, you referred to me being religious, which is ironic, and you just now talked about me double downing the face of contradictory evidence, which is what your entire stance does, yeah. McToon. So, I've only reiterated your behavior. So five rigorous and detailed measurements of the Earth's radius. No one cares about your adjectives, man. Can you explain? Can you explain how you can substantiate curvature? Because you're making a positive claim there's curvature on Earth. We need proof. Well, let's see. You can go to, to see it, you can go to mctune.net slash curve. Let's do that because you can see some nice ones. The very first one there is a horizon dip measured from Maine. So if the Earth is a sphere, then anywhere you go, the horizon must dip, right? It must never rise to eye level. Uh, eye level would be the geometric uh, 
a horizon for a, a flat Earth, and a dip would be the geometric horizon for a spherical Earth. So uh, the horizon dip has been measured many times, and here's one here you can actually see. Um, and uh, if, if I could share my screen, is that you think that'd work? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how to do it, but is there a way? Let's can you see, see from your end a way you could do it? Mm, let's see. There it is. So, all right, so that looks like you can see what I've shared. There you go. Okay, let me edit. I do. This is a pretty nice app. I like. I like StreamYard here. So, all right, so here is um, a theodolite that has been leveled and is pointing straight ahead. You can see the 90-0 at the top there. So that is at eye level, and you can see the horizon did not make it up there. Uh, to make sure that the theodolite isn't suffering from collimation errors, he flips the, the, the face of it and, and flips the theodolite uh, telescope the other way. And then you can see it says 270-0-0, so that's the opposite direction. You can see, again, that the horizon did not rise. So then he t turns it down and he measures the dip of the horizon there, and it's uh, about seven arc minutes. He did that 20 times, 10 in each face. And he got a, uh, a, a mean zenith angle of 90 degrees, seven arc minutes, 39 arc seconds, meaning that the, the horizon dipped that much. And when, uh, when doing the math there, using the Alberundi method, it works out to be the radius of the Earth when you account for refraction, because you, you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, skip conflating variables. You need to take them into account. So there is one measurement of Wait, this. Let's not, uh, okay, let's not just, let's not just move on. Yep. Let's, let's take this, let's handle, okay. So um, you're claiming that this is proving the curvature of the Earth, right? I'm claiming that it's, uh, evidence for the curvature of the earth right because science doesn't prove things correct because that is yeah. a logical fallacy um to, that, to okay maybe that a huge religion world but science science proves things but um nevertheless here is this going to be the same every time this observation is done Nicktoon? uh if if you uh, account for refraction then uh then it is it is within a margin of error Okay, so you're accounting for refraction and then factoring that into the observation of your physical geometric horizon. Yeah. Right, based on the geometry of your Earth, right? Yes. Okay, why do we see the horizon rise at 128,000 feet if this is supposed to somehow prove to me that there's curvature at such a low altitude? Um, well, we don't. Okay, um, so this is the best evidence you have for curvature. No, this is this is one. I okay, have, I have well, a whole let me just, page just say, let me. The reason this does not suffice is because, um, of course, the horizon's apparent. This is not going to be a consistent observation, and we all know it. Oh, well, so, so do you have do you have some conflicting evidence then? Um, I didn't do your experiment or attempt okay, to so prove. So if you're gonna if you're gonna try curvature. to dismiss this evidence. I would expect that you'd come up with some something other than just waving your hands and saying I don't like it, right? No, because... I'm not. I'm not. I'm explaining. I'm explaining that this picture doesn't prove curvature. Of course it doesn't. It's evidence okay. for curvature. I. It's it's hilarious that your religion can never have any proof. How convenient, man. So okay, th is this going to be the same every day I go out and do it, McToon? Yes, it will not rise to eye level. Okay, so you you know that this horizon picture on this same location based on different refractive indexes based on different conditions will never vary where this horizon is right now? It will vary every day, of course. Okay, but it'll never rise. It will never get too high. Now, of course, there, there is, because there are sometimes extreme conditions, but what happens is when you when you do a measurement from higher up, you get away from the extreme refraction conditions that happen near their surface. Um, what was his elevation? He's, uh, he's a, he's a hundred, couple hundred feet up. I think it's on a, it's on a rise above the water. So, um, once you get high enough, then, then you won't, you won't have any, any chance of having the refraction extreme enough. So 
do you have any 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 thing to refute this or is it just it's going to change every day and so i don't like yeah it. well that's just what happens mctune there's it's going to change based on different refractive input sure, variables sure. right right so this is provable okay so do you, i don't know if you know how much you know about refraction but we'll get to that so if you think this is this is not demonstrating or measuring a definitive curve it's not substantiating a geometric horizon based on your imposed radius well how, so how is like how is that i mean you're just saying that it's not but you are not presenting evidence that it's not do you think that i have just coincidentally compiled 365 days of a year footage of this same location that you're proposing with uh that would not be necessary see what i've what 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 this is yeah. includes this is it includes already addressing the refraction it's already been included in the controls of this observation okay are you not understanding my rebuttal bro i think i think you're not actually making a rebuttal i think you're just saying i don't like it and it's going to change so i'm going to just wave it away but but you you don't have uh actually any <laughs> evidence to to refute this yeah, well, no, but too, what I'm saying, bro, is that one image is not going to prove a physical geometric horizon, hence the well, fact this that it is this a horizon and it fluctuates daily based on conditions. Sure, sure. And 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 because because this is taken from a high elevation, the ref, the, the the variations are, are very slight, right? Okay, so that sounds like an assumption that's, that's still regarding my point. That's not a, an assumption. If you want, I can bring up the scientific measurements the substantiating uh, the the different um, refractive conditions at different elevations. Okay, McTiernan, is this the best that you have to prove curvature, or do you have something well, better? If you want, I can, we can go to more. Please. So go back. We've got uh, the horizon dip measured from New Zealand. Got to make sure that it's repeatable, right? So... The guy did this from New Zealand. Now, he didn't do it from one place 20 times. He did it from, I think, about 15 different places here at different elevations. He actually used, these are specifically um, geodetic um, survey markers in New Zealand. So there's this CV3R. You can look this up yourself, uh, 29 meters elevation. And then the dip was uh, 0.16575 degrees. Then he, he went to all these different locations, including then this last one at 479 meters elevation, where the dip was 0.6558 degrees. You can see this chart here. He charted that out uh, and, and accounted for refraction using the Gaussian uh, 0.133 coefficient of refraction. Uh, and and uh, it matched the radius of the Earth that's been previously measured. Oh, how was that done? How was it done? Well, that was the first one, the radius of the Earth measured in those five different uh, studies that I showed you. I thought you were showing me the movement of the Earth. The the first one that was the the radius of the Earth, mctune.net slash r, not mctune.net slash spin. Okay, I'm just sitting here listening. I'm not going and looking at your website, that's, bro. That's fine. That's fine. Um, denying evidence is great. For, for you guys so okay uh, bro. so we've got we've got no, here no, another is, one so do you want do you want bro. another or do you want to have a moderator okay look listen man if you say something you have to allow me to re to present a rebuttal okay? okay do not just transition into something else okay i said in my opening that um something that requires a presupposition of your model is a fallacy are you are you familiar with begging the question fallacy um sure and, and as soon as and make sure that you you clearly state the presupposition so that i can address it sure okay you're presupposing your ball earth mctune uh no no i'm not actually um i'm 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 making a hypothesis saying if the earth is a ball that's not a presupposition that's a okay. that's a testable okay. hypothesis that's how science works if you don't like science that's fine with me because denying science doesn't do well for for you guys i so love it when you, you deny science so a hypothesis is stated generally as an if then statement it comes in as a as a logical statement too if one thing then another thing if p then q right uh and then you test it to see if it happens and so then you have two possible outcomes Q and then P is supported. It, it, it is still possible or not Q, which means that P is not supported. So 
if modus tollens yeah exactly in modus tollens so if the earth is a sphere the the horizon will not rise to eye level the horizon does not rise to eye level therefore it still is likely uh, possible to be a sphere then we can do the opposite if the earth is flat the horizon must always rise to eye level the horizon does not rise to eye level therefore the earth is not flat okay so i was gonna hold off on this man but you just you're just making it impossible so i'm just gonna offer up the rebuttal you've pretty much already laid the groundwork for you to not be able to move on from this so you are to clarify you are saying that the earth has a physical geometric horizon okay and you derive that from the radius imposed of the sphericity of earth is this correct uh well the radius has been measured uh so it's not a presupposition it's based on a measurement um uh the geometric horizon is different from the the apparent horizon so uh we can calculate where the geometric horizon is and that's a simple geometry thing the apparent horizon is much more complicated because refraction is an issue uh, so you need to do things to control refraction right and if you don't control refraction then that reduces the quality of your observations and often can make it uh, so that you can draw no conclusions from it Okay, I'm going to ask it a little more pointed, maybe. So according to your model, would you agree that there has to always be a physical geometric horizon? Uh, a geometric horizon is not what we see. So yeah, there is always a physical geometric horizon, but we do not ever see it. Hmm. Can you explain to all the viewers that that don't seem to understand how there could be a physical drop off in land and it not be visible? Uh, well, there is a visible horizon and it's a different than the, the physical horizon because of refraction. Refraction affects what we see. So, so as so you see on the screen here, the there only, is hold just, only... on the screen here, we see the apparent horizon. And it's dropped. Okay. It's not. Yeah, you're island. preaching to the choir, brother. You're preaching to the choir, bro. I know apparent horizons are all there are. Okay, so are you saying that the only horizon that will ever be visible is the apparent horizon, and that your mystical geometric horizon will not be perceivable? Uh, we can't see it because we because the refraction affects our visibility of it. It makes it disappear. It makes it so that it's in a different. Uh, it's in a different place because refraction bends the light so we see farther or shorter typically farther than than what uh the geometric horizon is so uh how would it disappear if it's a physical location i've not ever seen it disappear uh i've never seen it exist mctoon you're looking at it on the screen right now you just said this was an apparent horizon. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That isn't geometric. Yeah, the geometric horizon is a is just it's a physical thing based on based on the geometry. So you're getting confused on that and you're going down this line of the, the geometric horizon. <laughs> I'm not the one that's confused, McToon. I know exactly what I'm talking about and you seem to be shucking and jiving. You're you're pretty bright, so you're being dishonest. Okay, I'm going to break it down for the viewer and then we're going to hear you respond. Okay? okay, there's a radius that you imposed on the earth based on your religious belief. Okay. No, no, I'm, okay? I, I will not take that. I will not take that uh, insult. You do not get to make that at home. That is a measured radius. It's not a religious thing. It's okay. measured. Okay, cool. Yeah, so um, I'm sure there's no presuppositions required to deduce the radius of the earth. But look, just to save time and hear less shucking and jiving because it's exhausting, bro. We're going to go with your model, okay? And we're going to say the radius is 3,959 miles deduced from the circumference, which is 24,901 miles. Do we agree? Sure. Okay, so I'm going to present something now, bro. So, uh, McToon, are you familiar with swans? Yeah, get to it. Okay. So, do you see this picture here, McToon? Yeah. Yes, I do. Okay, so I'm sure you've seen this, right? This is the black swan as it has been coined. Have you seen it? Yes. Okay, so this observation was taken at one foot observer height right 
Okay, now if you factor in the observer height with the radius to deduce the geometric horizon, it will be at roughly 1.2 miles. Okay, in this image, they've given you five feet, which it was actually at one foot, and the geometric horizon would be at 2.73 miles. Okay, now we see that there is not a physical geometric horizon in between us and these oil rigs, for example, at six miles and nine miles, but there's actually a horizon behind it. Can you explain where the geometric horizon is, McToon? Well, we don't see the geometric horizon, so I'm not going to address the geometric horizon. I will address the apparent horizon, though, because that's what we see. No, 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 no. You cannot just dismiss the geometric horizon because it has to be there I've for the already Earth already addressed involved. that and, and said very clearly multiple times, we do not see the geometric horizon, we see the apparent horizon. The apparent horizon is affected by refraction. The geometric horizon we cannot see because the ge because it's 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 it, you know the the refraction messes with it, modifies where it is. So I said that earlier, and you're and you're going you're still demanding that I talk about the geometric horizon. There is no geometric horizon that's visible. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. So, so if you're if this this Bro, please stop interrupting me, man. I'm letting you chill, dude. Sure. Let me talk back. Okay. So your model claims based on the geometry of the shape of the Earth that there's a physical, tangible, literal geometric horizon in which the land drops off and down and away from you. Is this correct? There is a physical, yeah, absolutely, yeah, but we and don't you're see saying it. It's never visible, and only apparent horizons are visible. Correct. That's what I've been saying. So, so we're, we're we're repeating here. Come on. Yeah, but it is a sufficient answer, Muktun. You don't seem to understand that, right? If the Earth is a ball, if it's a spherical object that with a physical geometric horizon, you cannot simply say. We don't see it. That is not sufficient. Okay, there has to be a visible, physical horizon. There can be a slight fluctuation into it. So I'm going to ask point blank again, one foot observer height. It should be 1.2 miles to the geometric horizon. All the oil rigs are is a frame of reference of distance. We can see clearly there is a horizon far beyond the nine mile structure. Can you explain to me what's going on in the image and how it can coincide with your ball earth. Sure, that is the apparent horizon. It is affected by refraction. This observation did nothing to control for refraction, but fortunately people have already done experiments and measurements to measure what kind of re refraction happens over water close to it. So since, since the, the observer here didn't care to control uh, for refraction, we just have to go to something else, right? So uh, in uh, 2003, Kibashi, <laughs> Wait, no, 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 I'm, to, I'm addressing, I'm addressing what's, what you asked me to address what's the visible horizon. I'm doing no, I address the evidence presented, bro. You just yeah. tried to completely dismiss it. Well, there, there is refraction happening. So if you're just like, why, then I'll just say, there's refraction. We don't know how much because they didn't. Okay, quantify. what are the five types of refraction, McTune? Uh Refraction is refraction. I don't need to tell you. That isn't the, true. The, that I isn't don't true. need to, to tell you the like the different categorizations of it. Right? Yes, actually, you do. This is your claim. Yes, it's my claim. My claim is not this is a particular category of refraction. I'm saying the refraction is happening here, and you can see that. Bring that image back up again. Okay. So you can see over on the left side, the uh, the crane that's sticking out on the left side of that platform is extremely refracted, right? We know for sure there is strong and aggressive refraction effects happening there, right? Because that crane arm is not straight. What is your point, bro? The point We're is, not talking about the structures. Aggressive refraction is happening. So that's evidence that there's a lot of refraction happening. So when there's lots of refraction happening and you've not controlled for that, then what can we conclude? Nothing, because we don't know how much refraction is happening. But we do know that it is possible to have enough refraction that the, the, the ray of light bends at the same rate as the radius of the Earth. That's been measured.
McToon, bro. Can yes, we, bro. Can, we, can you can you level out here? Because you can be you can have your little sarcastic comments, but I don't know what you think the third party viewer is thinking right now. So I'm going to ask again. You're attempting a subtle hand wave dismissal. That does this, not work. Well, in I, an intellectual I, I'm forum. ready to bring up the actual you. evidence if you want to. See I'm it. going. Maybe I'll ask the question in elementary terms, McToon. There has to be a physical horizon here. It isn't visible. There is an apparent horizon visible beyond the structures at nine miles. You're talking about refraction that you can see on the structures. The structure is not the argument, McToon. It is the horizon being sure, visible sure. or beyond the, the structures. So uh, I'm sharing my screen. You want to you want to put that on? Uh, sure, man. All right, so this is uh, from a study um, done by Kabashi um, in Germany. Um, and they used reciprocal zenith angles. So they took two um, theodolites and they pointed them at each other and they have a light on each theodolite. And so uh, each each uh, time frame, every for like five minutes, they, they measure the angle to each other in order to see that, that, um, that light, right? So it's um, measuring how much up and down is is uh, uh, being refracted. This is five meters over um, water, right? Five meters high over water, and this is then uh, this the horizontal axis is time, right? So we've got um, and then this this uh, it goes up to two here on the left side. You can see it goes up to two um, mm. at three three o'clock, right? So that's the refraction coefficient is the vertical axis, two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, up to 17. So this is uh, a, a, a coefficient of refraction of two means that the ray of light is bending at the same radius as the earth, which means that you can see indefinitely far. Now that doesn't always happen because uh, different areas of the, of the water will have different uh, refractive um, coefficients of refraction. But you can see here, it reached two, which means you can see indefinitely far. This is a measurement that happened. People have measured this to happen many times. It is empirical. It is observational. It happens. So since, since we don't know what happened in that particular Im image, we can say, well, it could be any amount of refraction. It apparently is a lot of refraction because those things have big artifacts on them. So there you go. We don't know. All right, cool. Much, that was a whole long be. way of not answering the question, McToon. So I'm going to ask you again, bro. Well, here we go. Where is the physical horizon necessitated by your religious belief of the spherical earth? Again, this the physical horizon is not visible. So I don't, I'm not going to answer where the physical horizon is. I will answer where the visible horizon is. Okay. So are you conceding that there isn't a physical geometric horizon in the image? I, we, we went the, over this again. You're on loop. I already said, you're, you're not answering. You're we don't the loop, see friend. the physical horizon or the geometric horizon. We see the apparent horizon. So you're, there is a horizon here that should be creating 60 feet of bulge prior to the structures, but we just don't see it because why? Refraction. Okay, now what are the five types of refraction and can you specify what type of refraction is causing this that to happen? This looks to me like a coefficient of refraction of two or more. That is not a type of refraction. I don't care. Well, it doesn't really matter if you care, McToon. Of course you don't care because this is a death blow to your model, bro. Actually, you don't lose I, I, I actually... Hold up, well, I'm, I'm just going to interject here. Um, I think that it would be a good idea to, in order to move the conversation forward if we do answer this question here. I w I'm sure that you do think that, bro, but I have debated McToon once, and he did that every time. So that's not how this is going to work, okay? He has to address and specify his claim for the evidence that is being presented against his model. Okay, so he's got to answer the question. Refraction is not the entirety of the answer. Do I do I need to provide a source to explain refraction? Because it's your claim, McToon. So can you tell uh, us exactly what type of refraction is and how it applies to this image and how it explains it? It is 
downward refraction matching the radius of the Earth at times. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not trying. To, okay. So I, I have so, I have presented to you empirical measured evidence of refraction happening at that rate over water, similar conditions, and you laugh about it because you don't like it because it it contradicts what you really 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 want it to be true, but it's not. I'm sorry. Refraction happens. It's been measured. Now, maybe you have some measurements of, of refraction over water to contradict this, or maybe you want to take some time and look at this this study and find some flaws in the methodology. Fine. mctune.net slash refraction, right? Go ahead, look that up. You can send it to me. I'll give you time. Bro. I understand that your, your religion is being dismantled live time, bro, but it's okay. All right. I see you getting flustered so here. I brought and I evidence. You're trying to you brought laughing and mocking. I'm sorry. I try not to laugh, bro, but I've sat here patiently listening to you just just divert. Okay, and I'm so not I'm laugh. directly addressing it with empirical measurements that you don't. No, like. no, no. You're 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 changing away from the evidence. It's called diversion. You're trying to show me some little magical graph you have over here. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking it's not about a magical the graph. Swan. It's an empirical measurement. It isn't about this image, is it? No, but your your image lacks controls. So lacking the controls, I brought in some third party controls that we can use to try to understand what's going on. No, you're trying to divert the controlled. The controlled variable here the, is the observer height. Yes, but okay. you did not control for refraction. There's nothing in this observation that addresses the refraction. McToon, are you familiar with what flat earther's position is on the horizon? We say that it's apparent, okay? Your belief is that there's a physical horizon. Yes. So you tell us uh, about uh, and, the refraction. And, and I understand how it would work in both ways. If, if it were flat, the horizon would always rise to eye level, uh, and it would typically be higher because of refraction, and it would be kind of blurry because it would it would fade off into, into too much distance okay so i'm going to clarify because you're using wizardry you are having to say that the geometric horizon is there but we don't see it and some type of refraction is causing it to go all the way back behind the structures at nine miles is Absolutely. that your claim that's completely correct and that's backed up mm -hmm. by empirical evidence Okay, what type of refraction is causing that to happen? I would say that is a coefficient of refraction of two or more. That isn't a type of refraction. I don't care to categorize the refraction. So you don't even if, understand your own you claim. If you want to categorize it, you go ahead and put it into whatever category you want. I don't care for the categories. Uh, I care for the actual empirical measurement that um, a ref coefficient of refraction of 2.0 or higher which happens over water often, can cause indefinite distance. So it's causing the physical horizon to go behind the structures the and disappear. The apparent horizon, yes. Oh, so the horizon's apparent. I've said that over and over again. Are, did you get, forget that? The apparent horizon is all that we get to see. This is painful, bro. So, okay, this is a new one. What you're saying is, as a globe birther, that you never see the geometric horizon? I, I don't know why you keep asking the same question over and over. No, we because see the apparent horizon. Them. We see the apparent horizon. We don't see the geometric horizon because refraction modifies our view of everything. If there were no air and nothing else to affect uh, the, the path of light, then yes, the apparent horizon and the geometric horizon would be the same. <laughs> okay, I'm not I'm not letting the wizardry go, okay, because I did the first time we debated. So I'm putting your feet to the fire. This is my stream. I don't have to do this. Okay, if you're not going to be intellectually honest, then I'm not going to sit here and let you and your friend control the dictation of the way that this goes. I'm presenting the first thing I've presented. I've let you shuck and jive and tiptoe around with your wizardry. Now I'm offering a, a an observation, right? This is what this is what science is, right? We take observable phenomena. Okay, here's the observation, Matoon. Okay, now I, I'm I'm well aware that you would prefer that I just accept your explanation 
as a rod assertion of refraction, but that is not sufficient. There are different types of refraction. You have to explain to me how it's causing the illusion of the horizon and removing the geometric horizon. I don't, it doesn't matter what you say about it. It doesn't matter if you don't like it. Of course you don't like it. This is lifetime dismantling your religion, but it is objective that you are going to have to explain how refraction is causing the horizon to disappear and reappear in the distance. What type of refraction is making that happen? It's a brand new anomaly. Please explain. Thousands of people are waiting. Um, it is a coefficient of refraction of 2.0 or higher. Okay, so basically, we're just gonna, I guess we're just gonna have to accept this as a concession because you're gonna keep doing it. You know, I've like given you, I've given you empirical measurements that a coefficient of refraction 2.0 or higher happens over water. A 2.0 coefficient of refraction causes the light ray to bend at the same radius as the Earth, it allows us to see indefinitely far over the Earth. Um, and, and you're, you're trying to demand that I somehow categorize it. Uh, you, can, you can put it into whatever category you want. Uh, I don't need to. Uh, it, is, it is simply downward refraction, and it's matching the radius of the Earth or more in order to see that far. It's downward refraction? Correct. Okay, yes. so um, are you not familiar with the five types of refraction, well, you, you McToon? Keep going because on. I, don't, I, I really, if you want to categorize them, you go ahead and you, you, put, you put it into whatever category you think it needs to be in. Right, go ahead and do that. I don't care for that. Um, I don't need to. Of course, to do you that. don't care for it, bro. But it's your claim. You're claiming this. Bro. I didn't claim that it was one of five categories of, of refraction. I claim that is, the is consensus refraction. of what refraction is. Oh, consensus is important to you now. Tell oh, me so about consensus. Hmm? So now you're postulating a new interpretation of refraction for the whole world. <laughs> Not at all. I'm uh, I'm going based on uh, empirical measurements, like the one by Kabashi here. Ismail Stop diverting. Stop diverting. Stop it, bro. You, everyone can see what you're doing, bro. You're diverting. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna interject here and say that it would be to move the conversation forward, it would be good to have the five types of um, refraction uh, defined and then we can uh, okay, see yeah. if that's relevant to the uh, conversation. I agree with that. So I'll just go ahead and do it since this is your explanation but Wait, don't you, you don't straw man me those categories are not my explanation okay so this doesn't matter this is the uh interpretation of the different types of refraction known to man okay this is so this, this is, is this refraction is go ahead go with this straw man okay so are you dismissing the 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 are you disputing the interpretation of refraction around the world um, no, I'm I'm going based on experts in refraction, like Ismail Ooh, Kabashi, who measured that over water we can have a coefficient of refraction of two or higher. Okay, McTune, I'm just gonna read it, bro. So there are five types of refraction. Okay, we got mirage, we got looming, we got sinking, towering, and stooping. Which one of those types of refraction, which is not debatable, no matter how much you want to shuck and dive around it, is being applied to your explanation for the black swan, McDoon? I don't know why you think that you need to demand that I categorize it. If you want a category, you go ahead. But that's not my claim. That's a straw man. The, the refraction effects that are happening are, are quantified and known. So, and, and, but of course, the observation you have, they didn't do anything to control the the uh, the variables there. So you don't know. You have no clue. It's a totally uncontrolled experiment or uh, observation. It's not even an experiment. It's an like uncontrolled observation. You don't know how much refraction is happening. There's no temperature uh, taken anywhere. You don't know the lapse rate. You don't know anything there because because that was pretty lazy. This is exhausting, bro. So, um, no, it's tough. <clears throat> to we just, um, I just want to uh, interject with a because I'm not sure that this is relevant. If, um, if, if Austin can explain how it's relevant, then we can, you know, sure, sure. It's, it's very simple. What, what I am presenting 
is an observation. I'll just break it all the way down, Matun. From what we do here is we know that the observer height is one foot, okay? You take the observer height based with the radius of the spherical Earth that you are claiming, okay? And then you can deduce the geometric horizon, right? Here, maybe this will help you. So yeah, the, if the we geometric deduce horizon the geometric, is a straw man because you can't see the geometric horizon. Where is the apparent horizon and what is the predicted apparent horizon for that observation? Okay, we don't need your predictions because we're sitting here looking at what the observation was, correct? But so if you're going to go with a logical claim, you need to get the, the, the prediction correct, okay? So don't bring a, a fallacy predict, prediction in place, right? A fallacy prediction puts the entire thing in uh, away. It, you don't get to use it if it's a fallacy, right? So if you're going to tell me what the apparent horizon is going to be, you need to correctly predict the apparent horizon. You can't use the geometric horizon and then say, that's what we should see for the apparent horizon. They're not the same thing. Predict the, the apparent horizon, not the geometric horizon when you're doing that test. Okay, I don't think you're understanding the argument here or you're being dishonest. So bring, I'm going to continue. Bring up that modus, bring up that modus tollens. Let's see it. No, if you don't mind, uh, shh, and let me finish, please. Okay, thank you. So at one foot observer height, based on the radius of the Earth that you are claiming, which we have established is 3,959 miles, deduced from the circumference of 24,901 miles, you then can formulate a geometric horizon. The geometric horizon, a physical, tangible, literal horizon that drops off because of the sphere going down and away from you because of geometry, should be no further than 1.2 miles. In this meme, we have given you five feet, the maximum distance to the geometric horizon should be 2.73 miles. Now, it doesn't really matter what you say about it. That is objective math based on your model. We are looking at so all the way to, to six the, and nine let's miles. Let's be clear. I will feet. agree. That is the measurements to the geometric horizon. So cut straight to the chase. Are you saying there's a geometric horizon here? And where is it at, McToon? You, you, we, you've looped on this how many times? We don't see the geometric horizon. We see the apparent horizon, which is different. So the geometric horizon is clearly not here. I keep saying that, and you keep wanting to try to pin that on okay. me. Stop okay, so trying to concession. pin that on me. That's a straw take... man. No, you just that's a concession. I'll take it. You just conceded there isn't a physical geometric horizon I in the image. We don't okay? see the geometric horizon. We see okay, the apparent now horizon. You're not so don't put okay. words in my mouth. Don't straw man me. We see the apparent horizon. We do not see the geometric horizon. Your calculations are for the geometric horizon. So stop calculating the geometric horizon and calculate the apparent no, horizon and no. then see if it matches. The geometric horizon has to be there, McToon. This is your religion, not mine. I know there isn't a radius of the earth, okay? You're the one that has to claim that, and you have to stand yeah. behind the radius. Do you yeah. understand the physicality of the argument here? There's a physicality of the argument. You are trying to hand wave dismissal it. It is not going to work, okay? You've said this encompassing term refraction. I've asked you to specify there are different types of refraction. Then you threw a little fit saying you don't want to talk I've, about the I've different types of past. refraction. I've, I've done more than just categorize the particular type of refraction. I've gone way you past that. I've, I've addressed it using the coefficient of refraction. I've talked about lapse rate. All this is way past the simple categories of, of refraction. No, it's an explanation of why refraction, you know what Listen, coefficient no, refraction is. This will help you. This will help you maybe. Refraction is a sufficient answer because refraction is relative to the horizon. You are claiming that that horizon is being eliminated from the view and shot back to behind the platforms okay so that's a new type of refraction unknown to the are world you, are you claiming that refraction cannot affect the horizon no 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 but it is not nearly what we see in this image now is it mctoon what do you mean nearly actually no of course i am not claiming that it, the refraction cannot <laughs> of course it can that's all the horizon is it's an apparent horizon your belief is there's a physical horizon no, you're, you're straw manning me again we see the apparent horizon not the physical horizon 
No, 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 no. I'm not strawmanning you. Do you believe there's a physical geometric horizon that we live on a ball? Yeah, but we don't see it. We we don't see it. We see the apparent horizon. And it makes the geometric horizon disappear. We don't see that. Well, stop, stop, stop. That's just such a straw man. We don't it, see the geometric. We see the apparent. And the, then it's possible that we could see the same one, but typically that would require no atmosphere. Okay, so I don't see how much more layman's terms I can present this. I think I've done it pretty much every way, but it's very simple. Your explanation isn't sufficient. Anyone with a bubble 100 IQ right now knows that, okay, you there's a physical horizon. You're claiming that you don't see it and you that there's only the apparent, apparent horizon. Yes, exactly. you can, are you conceding that there is no physical geometric horizon? No, are you saying I'm conceding that, there, that we don't saying, see the phys physical horizon. You, you, you've looped on this so many times. Okay, let's just move on. Let's you just can, move on. It's a concession. Can stop. Okay? I'm not conceding that the geometric horizon is what we see. And you're trying to pin that on me, and that's a straw man. No, 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 no. This is what I know. This horizon right here, brother, that's just the apparent horizon because that's all the horizon is. It's the apparent horizon. Actually, that's a redundant phrasing there, okay? So all it is is the appearance of the sky meeting the ground. That's what we all know. Flat Earthers know this. We don't have to lie about reality and bend it into something that it's not. You're doing a dance right now that you're trying to defend your religion. You're trying to say it's refraction, but I don't want to specify it. I don't have to cite it. I don't have to know exactly what type of refraction it is. I don't have to explain that there's a physical horizon there that's MIA. I just, uh, 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 you didn't take into account. Can I move away from it? Okay, but simply this is a death blow. It's irrefutable it, to your model. I've refuted You've done it completely. Very job of proving you with, don't understand the argument or you're being with dishonest. evidence, with empirical measured evidence, and you have just dismissed it because it's a little uncomfortable for you. Okay, you self-project a lot, McToon. But so I think that we all know you can't understand it. It's very simple. There is no explanation. It's no big deal. The apparent horizon is the only type of horizon that there is. The horizon is inherently apparent due to perception and different different factors of refraction and atmospheric conditions. That's why it varies from day to day because it is an apparent location. Your model necessitates a physical location. It doesn't matter how much you want to ignore that. That is objective. Yeah, there is a physical horizon, absolutely. And uh, we don't see it, though, unfortunately. So, Why? Because refraction modifies the path of light. You're saying a refraction is taking the physical location, making it be invisible to the viewer, and then sending it back behind the nine-mile structure. No, no, what's happening is more, more of the, 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 the water is being brought to us because of refraction. So the, the light, the light goes up from from the horizon, uh, from the water, right? And then it curves, matching the radius of the Earth around the curve to the observer. This is simple, <laughs> ge this is simple geometry, and uh, it's math. So it's sorry, simple it geometry. Okay, yeah, McTiernan, you've done a sufficient job of not answering the question, bro. I, I I always leave it up to the third party. You know, like so, I, I can't make um, to be honest, bro. So I think MC Toon has answered the question. Um, if if Austin has a response to that, um, I'll, we can let him respond. If not, uh, I think that it would be a good idea to move on. Okay, yeah, sure. Of course, <clears throat> this, this always wants to be moved on from, and we can move on. I think I've done a very thorough job of, of demonstrating that you're shucking and jiving, being dishonest. You have not even clarified your response with any specificity. You haven't even explained what type of refraction it is. You're trying to hand wave dismiss it from the beginning, saying that you don't like the factors involved. Of course you don't. The factors dismiss your entire religion. <clears throat> so this is a concession, whether you know it or not. It's cool. I know that you don't yeah, like that, that word. I don't appreciate but that straw literally. man, but I, I understand why you need to do it okay so we'll move on um but in conclusion um, very simply based on the radius of the earth there has to be a geometric on. physical one thing, one thing that i'm going to do if we're going to move on um because austin has had the last two uh points to bring up i'm i think it would be a good idea to let mc toon bring up a point okay yeah, and i brought up one point he's brought up like seven different experiments and proofs but i don't really care he can go on um yeah i i i, I uh, showed uh Measurements of Earth uh, rotation, uh, measurements of Earth's uh, radius and curve. So I've brought up three. So maybe, yeah, I I would uh, I'd say why don't um, why don't Austin? Why don't you bring up like some measurements of flatness or something? Okay, well that was funny. 
So anyway, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I very clearly stated I don't know a definitive model. You're the one claiming to know what the Earth is. In fact, you are the one claiming definitive measurements. So anyway, let's just move on. Now, I've, um, I have heard you say it's flat uh, on your own stream. All so, observation shows that it's flat. Okay, right? so maybe because you no have some observations. No, I don't I don't have to give you observations, bro. I, I just took a oh. nap. I woke up and I came to dismantle your religion casually, so bro. You've you already have... done it for me. Perfect. You don't have observations, so you have no evidence to support. Yeah, it. sure. That's Here, fine. I got some evidence, bro. I'm, I'll show you the video, man. You want to you just play the video? You are you. Do you want me to play a video? Uh, I, I don't your, really your think that you, I think you know that there's observations that show that we see too far. You're just sitting here hoping that I don't have some way to show it. Okay, I, you're the uh, one that has. To, you're, not, you're not understanding. This is why I don't like to play y'all's games, bro. Because you're the one making the positive claim about what the Earth is definitively. I'm just saying that I know the current model's wrong, provably. So you technically, literally, are making the positive claim. Okay. So yes, you're trying to divert the way to some put, uh, man uh, model of mine. I of evidence not. for that. So, so what? it's your turn. Go ahead. Um, you're kind of, I don't know why you're not like showing your evidence. This is very desperate of you, man, to act like this. So anyway, um, again, I'm, I'm trying to clarify here. I know you don't like it, but it doesn't really matter. You are claiming a definitive model, brother. I'm not, Okay. I'm not. I don't know exactly what the earth is. It's called being intellectually honest. You claim that you do most definitely know. So you're having to substantiate your positive claim of the sphericity and the movement of the earth inside this heliocentric model. We can move on because I can show the flaws in all of it. Okay. So very simply, you think that we live on a globe and that earth is a, is a near perfect vacuum. Would you agree with that? The What's a near perfect vacuum? Space. Sure. Okay, how do you agree that the natural antecedent to gas pressure is containment? Oh, could you could you support that claim, please? Um, that pressure needs containment. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. it's in the word press up on the container. No, not, a, gas pressure. not 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 through a dictionary, but actually through through some sort of a you know where where is the the statement that that. Uh, pressure demands a containment well all observation shows that so no, you no, don't no. have you, to you're just you're just making a claim you're just making an assertion i assert okay this. so what okay. uh what is the actual like where is the if i the blow proof, air into uh, a in balloon eyes, then? if i blow air into a balloon does it need to be a balloon to hold the air in it Mateen? yeah but that's one example you 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 uh, you oh, you've said no, it's a it's a no, it's I, the uh, their necessary antecedent so you've made a, an assertion so support that assertion. Okay. Do you know what that word means? It's the natural or necessary antecedent. Yeah, that, that's to a gas dictionary pressure. thing. So where, listen, man. Yeah. Listen, man. I'm claiming a definitive physical law. If you're oh, saying good. it's not okay. true, so then, then, I, then you'll one have example, some citations. One example for this. of it not being true, and then I'm wrong. You'll have some citations for this. Then okay. Let's see. Post them. Are you disputing that pressure requires containment, McToon? Uh Pressure requires containment. I'll take that, yes. Okay. Does the Earth's atmosphere have gas pressure? Uh, it has atmospheric pressure. Yes. Okay. Is there gas in the atmosphere, McToon? Yeah. So there is containment, and it is gravity. Okay. So is there a physical barrier of containment, or is it just this mystical deified force? There is no physical barrier. Right. Can you... Can, and now we can go on to your magical force and get, it can be dismantled as well. But what I'm trying to say is, can you provide any example in natural world where pressure doesn't require containment? Absolutely. If you Physical wanna, containment. My, I'm sharing my screen right now. Um, All right, so this is here a video by Dwayne Kellum. And you can see here uh, on the screen, he has a few different things, uh, Wednesday, July 24, 2019. On the far right, you see barometric pressure, and it's in inches of mercury, uh, which is 29.88 inches of mercury. So this is on the ground. This is just 
uh, before launch or as they're about to launch. So yeah, you can see here it's it's going up, right? Now I'll skip ahead a little bit here. You can see now the pressure's down to 12.8. Now you can review this footage if you want. You'll find that between the ground and this level, there were no physical containers that it went through. Maybe we can pop further in here. We can see the pressure is now 2.73. We can go farther. 0.27 is the pressure. Now, you can review this footage, and from the ground all the way up to here, there is no physical barrier that it went through. What, is causing, what? what is causing that difference in pressure? Hmm. The dissipation, the dissipation of the pressure is relevant to how much gas is being introduced at the surface level. Introduced at the surface level, so like over uh, uh, a rainforest, maybe is that what you're talking about? Like the trees are introducing pressure, air. Yes, McToon. Okay, and then over the uh, say the desert, maybe the same amount of of pressure is there and so the same amount of gas must be appearing okay um you don't you don't seem to even understand this but i'm not going to let you do this are you effectively as answering my question with questions uh, well yeah i yeah actually i'm i'm asking because because there is there is this difference in pressure you you talked about a physical container and i showed that there does not need to be a physical container Wait, when did you show that? Can you give us an experiment of they're uh, not needing well, this to video be... right here? So down low near the ground, 28.63 inches of mercury up at altitude, 0.26 inches of mercury of much lower pressure uh, and no what, physical or what? barrier. Or what, McToon? Much lower pressure and no okay, barrier. Pressure is there. It's, still, it's still there. What's that? Is the pressure? So there is still pressure there. There is correct? still pressure there. Yes. Okay, so that doesn't answer the question. So can you explain why the natural antecedent for pressure is containment, but you claim the Earth is not contained? Well, I just showed you that there is a pressure you me, without, you just without me physical me containment, pressure. right? Without a physical barrier. Yeah. Um, you're definitely, once again, imposing that there isn't some physical barrier. It's called a presupposition. Oh, I'm asking see, you to substantiate your no... presupposition. We can see there's no barrier because you can watch the video and there is no like container that it went through. So your proof for there not needing to be containment is something going to a high elevation where there's still pressure. Well, there's never a place where there's no pressure. I don't need to know about the characteristics of your religion, McToon. I'm asking you a simple, basic, fundamental law of the natural world. The natural antecedent of pressure is containment. Can you provide any form of observation or experiment in which it shows that pressure can exist without container? Right here, this one I just showed you. You you asked that twice, and I've shown it's the same answer. No, you're presupposing the nature of space and that there isn't a container, and there's still pressure present in your experiment. So, can you once again answer the question being asked? So in in my model, there is no point where the pressure is zero. There is always positive pressure. So just like on on here at 0.26 inches of mercury, as you continue to go up, measurements have have identified that that it continues to reduce in pressure. Okay. Um, what okay? What happens if there's high pressure next to low pressure? Uh, with uh, lacking a force, they will equalize. Okay, so high pressure will migrate to the low pressure? Yes, but somehow, uh, where this balloon is, it didn't happen. Strange. It's still within the containment, McToon? Mm, yeah, it, 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly there's another concession so okay. so yeah the, the 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 downward force is still containing it oh so you want to you want to shuck and jive to the downward force i'm more than happy to do so yeah. bro but uh, are you conceding that that there there has to be containment for pressure or can you provide I, I already an said and you, you seem to like go over these things over and over once i've said them there is something containing the air 
you don't seem to understand the reason that this conversation is so reiterative and remedial is because you're shucking and jiving. Yeah, you're trying to you're trying to get me to concede something and you're trying to get me to follow your script. I'm not going to do that, right? There is a containment, right? Something is containing the air and it's not physical because this video shows very clearly that there is no physical barrier on near the ground where it's 28 inches of mercury to up high where it's 0.16 inches of mercury. There I, is something that's happening there and something pulling it down. And as you said, according to the second law of thermodynamics, the pressure will equalize and it will happen fast and violently. This type of air pressure uh, without a force holding it, uh, causing it to, to happen, it would very quickly, very quickly equalize, but it doesn't. Wrong. I already answered that because there's constantly gas being introduced to the system. Yeah, it's a okay. closed down okay. system. Where where is the measurements of this massive quantity of gas being introduced, and the and that it going up high and then disappearing or something? You have whoa, measurements whoa, of that whoa. or something, or are you just asserting that because you've made lots of assertions? You're good at that. Yeah, they're all factual, my man. Yeah. Okay. Then then if it's factual, then you'll have you'll have evidence to support your assertion. Are you disputing gases being created at the surface level of the I'm, earth? I'm disputing the quantity that you're claiming. I haven't claimed a quantity, my you man. You're the one presupposing there are that many. What? So you are presupposing there is so much gas pressure Dude. being gas being generated near the surface that at uh, 20, 120,000 feet, there's there's nothing there. Did you just say the word presupposed, yeah, bro? I presupposed. asked you what the natural... Oh, I, I said, know that's your word, sorry. <laughs> that was funny. So I asked you, how do we, how do you explain that the natural antecedent to pressure is containment? You then showed me some footage of something going up high in the air and the gas pressure being a little bit lower. And I'm asking you, will that pressure still present? Does it require containment? Okay, this is a natural law. You would have there to is, provide... There is containment. Evidence. Absolutely, there's containment. Oh, so the earth is contained. The the air pressure is containing, is being contained by a pre, by a um, a force. Okay, so this this pressure on Earth doesn't require containment because of this mystical I force. Just said earth. it required. It is contained. No, a physical container. Correct. It does not require a physical container. Okay, can this be recreated on Earth? Sure. We uh, it's, well, you can see it in the video right here. No, you're presupposing the nature of the earth. I'm asking you to recreate it. You're presupposing that there is no container. Do you not see what you're doing? This doesn't answer the question. You're presupposing the very – it's called begging the question, McToon. That's all you've done this whole time. You're begging the question, bro. This is, this is empirical evidence right here. There was no barrier that this went through to get down to this very low pressure. But very low what? We're going in circles. There's still pressure there. Yes. So it doesn't matter what, how you spin this. There's still pressure in your observation where it's at. I'm saying that the pressure cannot exist without containment. You are begging the question I and you're presupposing and you're diverting. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Do, do, do we need – if you go get – tire uh, air pressure in your tire do you need the rim and the tire to put the air in it yeah that's, that's a strong man, because that's you. a different that's a different um uh, uh, there's no force doing that there okay so again you're saying this is the only one time in the natural observable phenomena of the universe where we don't need containment for pressure can you provide an experiment that can substantiate that that is even possible right here on screen with this little you are understanding the tune. You're presupposing the nature of the earth. It's called begging the question. What, 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 am, what is being presupposed? You asked for an experiment where there is air pressure that's that's without a container, and this is it right here. We can see. No, it isn't. You're presupposing there's no container, McToon. Well, where is the container then? Above it. Where? Why you are presupposing are you a container, actually. I don't know exactly where everything is, McToon. I know that this is a basic natural law. If you're questioning it or challenging it, you then have to be able to substantiate it. You are presupposing that there isn't containment and then saying, look, it's low pressure up here. There isn't that is recorded. I said there is containment. Okay, physical container. Stop playing semantics. This is wizardry. Oh, yeah, you're, you were, you keep... You keep doing that. So um, 
This uh, is bad, bro. So what? What? To, the, there is obviously no physical container between the ground and here to have that reduction in pressure. So here's the deal: in space, it just continues, right? So down at now on screen is 0.16 um, millimeters of mercury, right? As you go higher and higher, it has been measured to continue to reduce in, in pressure so that when you get 400 kilometers up, 1,000 kilometers up, the pressure is extremely small. That's it. Yeah, but there's still pressure. Yeah, there's asking, always positive how pressure. How is it possible an ever-expanding infinite vacuum would be linear to a pressurized system? The natural antecedent to gas pressure okay, is so contained. So you're asserting physical that again. But you won't actually support this assertion that the natural antecedent thing. Where is that? I know you heard Nathan Thompson say it, but where Good. is the actual like law that isn't from Nathan Thompson's mouth? Okay. All observation shows that for gas pressure to exist, there has to be a container. Okay. It, so if it, you're saying that it's true, where, then where you is this provide evidence for that fact. Everything else provides evidence for my facts. I'm not playing your games. You're just my asserting it. Example, needs a container if i put gas into a box it needs the box okay you're saying that isn't the case can you provide an example one single example will suffice my dude and this is not one obviously uh just a second thank you somebody's messaging me The, the, I have another guy coming at uh, uh, ten, and I think he he thinks he thinks uh, he's on a different time zone or something. So, all right. So um, uh, I asked you, you 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 made an assertion that uh, the natural antecedent thing that, uh, uh, but you haven't supported that. You just said lots of more assertions. So do you have that? Because I haven't heard that as a natural law before. So uh, could you? Could you show that natural law where, where somebody else is stating it? Uh, it's pretty simple, bro. If you're challenging my assertion that gas pressure needs a container, can you just provide one singular example of this not being true? And then my claim would be wrong. Um, okay, so you're, you're going to just deflect from, from that assertion and, and just demand that it be true. This is painful, man. This but, is why but, I almost you, you didn't agree to do You haven't supported your claim. You're saying the natural antecedent. Oh, I say it again. How does Thompson the say it? Natural antecedent to gas pressure is containment. Yeah, and I okay. So I agreed to containment. Yep. Physical containment. Oh, physical. Con okay. So where is that stated other than just your statement or uh, Nathan Thompson's statement? In the definition of pressure. Okay. So post it. Let's see. It. Okay. What? Oh my God! No, McTune, I'm not googling for you, bro. Here's what I'm okay, saying. So you don't have okay. evidence to support your your assertion. Okay, so you're saying Correct. pressure doesn't need containment? It does not need physical containment. Can you provide one example of being able to do that in an experiment? And then I'm wrong. That's oh, all you got to do. Sure. One singular experiment. I can do billions sure. of experiments proving that it does need containment. So can you just provide one that would prove that I'm wrong, please? Uh, yeah, just a second. You keep trying to turn the tables like, uh, like, bro, you're the one claiming that it doesn't need physical containment. Substantiate that claim. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, here it is it's on the screen right now. That is presupposing there is no containment above this location. That is called begging the question. But why is there a difference in pressure? I've already explained yeah, this. And, and you've asserted it without evidence. No, you're trying to divert away from the very simple question being postulated. Yeah, yeah. So you've made the assertion that there is uh, near the ground lots of new air being created. Um, and, and so what happens because, because the second law of thermodynamics demands that lacking a force, it will equalize. And it's not equalizing. So what is causing it to not equalize? So again, you are diverting and I'm not going to be a part of it. OK, yeah. this is why I almost didn't even agree. So I'm going to ask you again. I'm saying that there is a container for pressure. That's what observable so you're, phenomena you're, says. You're asserting you're that there's a container. To to 
So you, you so, so you trying. say you don't have a model, but you do. It's flat, and there's a container. That's your model so far. No, that's just that's just natural phenomenon, my man. That's your I model. I accept observations. That's your you model. Do not right. Can you provide so, my experiment? Now, now there pressure? there are there are um, places. Uh, so if you're familiar with how they do enrichment of uranium, they use um, a, a fluorine fluoride. Uh, fluorine. So what is it? Sodium, or not sodium, um, uranium hexafluoride, which is a gas, and they put it in a centrifuge and they spin it. Um, so it's a gas in a centrifuge, and what happens is on the outside of it, the heavier atoms go to the outside and the lighter atoms go to the middle, and they pull those out and they put that into the next centrifuge, spin it again, next centrifuge, they spin it again, and that's how they, they enrich the uranium. They want the lighter uranium. Um, and so a, after they've done that many, many times, then, uh, then they have enrichment. So the cool thing is, though, that that is a, a spinning centrifuge that causes a centrifugal force and thus creating a difference in pressure. Okay. Was that pressure without a physical barrier of containment somewhere yeah, outside of the, the experiment? In, from, the, from the out the, the, the perimeter of the, the centrifuge to the center of the centrifuge, there's a difference in pressure. Okay, what's outside of this experiment? What's outside of this reaction? Um, the a plant, physical barrier, the the plant, we all know yeah. it. So, so, okay, so you still haven't substantiated that the, you've, you've just asserted that, that you have to have this and you, you won't, you, do, you absolutely won't um, back up your assertion. And I know why because you just parroted it from somebody else. So that's fine. Um, uh, um, I kind of expect that. So, all right, what do you got? Yeah, I'm gonna say it again. You're not diverting, bro. So you're okay. gonna have to leave the stream or you're gonna keep getting the same thing because even the moderator has to be honest and admit you aren't answering the question. You're trying to turn the tables on to me, okay? So what I'm saying is the natural antecedent to gas pressure is containment. No, no, you're saying it's not an assertion. With you're observation. Just observation that. coincides with my assertion. It's an assertion. And if you're not gonna support that, that it, there, there must be a physical barrier, then you don't have an assertion. Okay, if I blow air into a balloon, it's being contained and having pressure because of the physical container of the balloon. Can you explain to me how that could happen without a physical container? There's a physical container in that example, yes. Okay, in all examples of their pressure, there's a container. You're saying that isn't true. So can you explain, what, provide one? I provided my, my, my example, which I could do forever, of course. Now, can you provide one singular time that gas pressure exists without containment? Yeah, uh, it's on the screen right now. It's Dwayne Kellum's video, his 24th video where he says he sees stars. Okay. You could also I'm losing see brain the curve, it's pretty so, cool. Okay, yeah, you, we've already uh, addressed very rudimentary. That's begging the question. You're assuming and presupposing that there isn't a barrier and you're just saying, oh, look, you're the pressure got lower. There and there got is higher. a barrier. Well, thanks for enlightening us, Mattoon. You're presupposing there is a barrier, though. And and there is because not of the a barrier. Law of it's, gas. it's obvious there is not a barrier from the ground up to the high level there. And and that is what continues, right? So at, at, at a thousand kilometers, the pressure is is much, much, much less. And this has been empirically measured um, because we've had things at that elevation. So. Um, but and, and then you asserted some point. other stuff uh, about about air getting created, but you won't back that up either. Okay, can you can you concede the point here? Or are you going to just keep I doing this? I will not concede that there is a containment to that pressure, and it is not physical. No, no, no. Okay. Well, what I'm asking you, my man, is can you provide an observation that shows that pressure can exist without containment? That is not fit those parameters. You're presupposing that there isn't a container. It's called begging the question yeah, you're, fallacy. You're begging the question fallacy is presupposing that there is a container. No, I'm stating a very simple observable natural phenomena that all pressure requires you're containment. Asserting. Okay. Not stating, you're asserting. It's okay. called, it's called Ipsy provide Dixit. One piece of contradictory evidence. It's called Ipsy Dixit, an assertion made but not proved. All observable phenomena coincides with it. I thought nothing could be proved, McToon. Anyway, we all know that's nonsense. So 
All observations show that pressure requires containment. If you're challenging that assertion, all it requires is one singular demonstration where pressure can exist without containment. You failed to do and so. I've so done far. it already. That the Dwayne Cullum has a fantastic video showing that that there is no containment from level to level. There, it's not going through different, um, different uh, you know con membranes as it goes up higher to different levels. And, and there isn't this, this uh, violent rushing of air to equalize as the second law of thermodynamics demands lacking a force. Okay, no, there are alternative explanations for the way the atmosphere behaves. So you are diluting the conversation per usual. So, so, so you just can see you've, that you've made, you it, don't you've have made another example. assertion. You're going to back that up you or you're going to just make an assertion and then walk away from it. Wait, what, what, what are you saying that I should back up? You asserted that there are other explanations. Yeah, this is really what you wanted to do, but you're going to have to be honest and concede that you don't have it before I will play your little game. Do, do, will you concede that you don't have an observation you can present that would provide... No, 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 I just and, presented it, the Dwayne Kellum video. You're presupposing that it isn't contained. This is getting very reiterative. I... I, there's no container. You can see in the video, there's no containers. It's not going from le through different containers as it goes up. So um, oh, I think, so I, think we've, know, right, I, I think we've, uh, I think we've, I think what's happening, yeah. happening here is you guys are both um, sort of speaking, uh, speaking past each other. Oh no, he's just not answering the question, man. So, so do, do, you want, do you want to, um, do you want to move on to Q and A? Or do you want to uh, to continue with uh, another topic or something? Yeah, I think this has been pretty sufficient. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up with a conclusion and then we can move on. Because I think maybe people are – I know you like to get wizardry on us, right? So recap. He could not explain the black swan. Of course he can't. There is no explanation for all the viewers, just so you know. It's a literal death blow to the globe model. There is no explanation. Because the spherical nature of the Earth necessitates a geometric horizon imposed by the radius. Okay, that is not there. You cannot observe it. It's because it isn't there. The horizon is nothing more than apparent. He did nothing but shuck and jive, say refraction, not even actually claim or cite what type of refraction it was. And then he shucked and jived it. Okay, he shucked and jived the movement when I said, him, oh, there has to be, there is an independent frame of reference reference to to prove or substantiate the axial rotation he shucked and jived it i asked him about the natural antecedent to pressure being containment he shucked and jived it for the last 20 minutes everyone has seen it that's only three of the points dismantling your religion and so this is what was expected to happen i asked you beforehand if you were open-minded if you'd be honest about the concessions clearly you've demonstrated that isn't the case but again i'll leave this up to the third party viewers okay well, uh thank you um yeah i uh I completely explained using um, measurements, uh, empirical measurements, and previously done um, experiments, uh, how the black swan so-called um, observation is completely within the predictions of the globe model. Um, I showed uh, uh, five detailed and rigorous measurements of the radius of the Earth, as well as several um, different um, conf confirmations of the uh, curve of the Earth on mctune.net slash curve. Um, and uh, the the gas pressure here is is uh, completely predicted using gravity and the second law of thermodynamics. So uh, lots of evidence that I showed and not so much, a little from, from Austin. And so I'll say it again, when you double down in the face of contradictory evidence and you cannot rebut all the evidence, you're just exposing the flaw in your side, a very wise statement. So. Um, yeah, premier premier version of it. That's a perfect example of inversion and self projection, also known as wizardry in my book, yeah. because that's what you did this whole time. So, uh, do you want to do some questions? Sure, bro. Okay, so I've got. Um, we won't spend a lot of time on on each question because they will will, right? But we'll take turns, right? I'll ask one from 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 my audience to you, and if if you have maybe some super chats from your people, um, you could ask them to me if you want. So. But uh, let's just try to keep each to like a minute answer, just to be fair, because I don't know about you, but I got a bunch of super chats, a bunch of questions people asking. So um, <clears throat> uh, let's see if uh, so Sean Hawkins says, if if Austin can't quantify ether, how can he say it exists? 
<laughs> okay, uh, you cannot quantify the immaterial. So ether is postulated to be the absolute frame of reference, a universal background. It's a force field, a field of force. It's immaterial. You cannot quantify the immaterial. Dumb question. All right, you got one. Uh, you got one for me. No, nah, you you got this, man. Oh, yeah. I don't think that my people have any questions for you. They've seen you don't answer questions. Seriously, I all right. Well, people, if if you have questions, send them a super chat. I appreciate uh, Austin very much here. Um, so, you don't um, have to super chat it. Just ask a question three, that you want. Three to, Ron know. says Austin has zero idea what a humble is. Well, that's not a question. Um, hold on, uh, I'm, I'll stick to questions. Um, <laughs> people who can't figure out that MC is not Mick shouldn't throw stones. I don't call people that can't even rap MC. Um, yeah, Wait, I, I, you don't, I you you don't want me to rap, I'm telling you. It's bad news. Bad I believe it, bro. I'm not disputing that. I think we agree on something for the first time tonight. Uh, all right, here. Um, GPS asks... How does GPS work? Oh my gosh. So uh, it's, you're, you're asking me to explain something based on a model that you're presupposing for me. That's weird. I thought we already covered that, but there's plenty of ways that it could work. Sat to loons, underground wires, 99% of transmissions are used with towers and underground wires. Next. Uh, all right. Um... Somebody, somebody buy Austin a sandwich. Apparently, you need a sandwich. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. All right. Oh, King Kong sex dungeon. That was a little mean. He said, "Austin, do you like meth?" I don't think that's fair. Um, uh, look at the gamma male behind his keyboard. Uh, let's see. Um, all right. Anybody in the chat have any uh, any questions? For him, tag me. Um, so, all right, I got a question. Sure. Someone's asked me to give you a question. All right, ask McToon where are his variables to prove his refractive conditions specifics, please. Uh, the variables for the refractive conditions on, on, on which exactly? Um, I, I guess uh, for if if we're to look at the 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 refractive index for the coefficient of refraction is really the the key. Um, oh, we got a couple. Um, uh, for like the theodolite viewing. So those have been at, at elevations, those have been measured um, quite, for quite a while ago. Gauss did it. Um, and he uses 0.13 uh, is what he found. Now he, that was high elevation to high elevation. Um, the US Geological Society uses 0.17 for their coefficient of refraction. Either either is fine. They get they, they, they have slightly different margins of error when you do that. And um, but but they do have uh, when surveyors do vertical measurements, especially they they look for overcast days with calm weather, so that helps a lot. Um, so my goodness, a bunch of questions came in. Um, you that, just said that, something about measured variables, bro. But w what are they? That was the question he asked. What are the variables? What are the variables? Um, so when when a coefficient of refraction is is a compound, uh, the result of a compound measurement, right? It's it's not um, it, you can calculate it and you can measure it. And so you measure it with the reciprocal zenith angles by pointing two theodolites at each other. And the angle that they, they point at each other um, gives you the coefficient of refraction. It's based on the arc of the, the radius. The radius is the arc of the light between them. 2.0 is about a 4,000 mile arc radius. Okay, I got another question that they want me to ask you. Um, does water seek its own level? Yes, it does. Except for this ball earth, correct? It bends around this magical ball earth. Well, um, if you, if you uh, let's see, mc2.net slash level, uh, you'll find out that level has been defined as a curve for centuries. So, All right, stop promoting your website, bro. We don't, we get it. Well, I don't get, I don't, it's not, I don't get any ad revenue. I do it, I do it just for free information for people. So, um, let's see. Uh, Austin, how did the celebrities faking their deaths and going to the hidden lands at the polls? How about the celebrities faking their deaths and going to the hidden lands at the polls? 
I don't know anything about what that what actually happens. That's a dumb question because I have had speculative conversations because I'm a real one. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if there's more land. We've been lied to about the nature of this earth. So how would I know exactly what it is? So if I, we even lied to about the earth and you just refuse to break out of your indoctrinated bubble to even entertain that possibility long enough to see that your religion cannot hold its own, then how does that make me a crazy person for speculating about what we don't know? So, okay, next. Okay, you got one? No, nah, man. All right. I think everyone sees you don't like to answer questions, uh, bro. What are the internal angles of a triangle with sides measuring one, one, and one? It's from Curtis Reynolds. Sorry, what would you say? What are the internal angles of a triangle with sides measuring one, one, and one? Not playing your game. Sorry, Curtis. Uh, Phantom Ring is wondering, what's five divided by zero? Not playing your game. You think I don't know where these questions come from? Are y'all, y'all, it's so funny. People, I know why, people are like them. About, why are we talking about five divided by zero? You can't substantiate curvature or axial rotation, guys. That means it's not moving and it's not a ball. It's a uh, little bit bigger here. Why does the Tropic of Capricorn measure smaller than the equator? Yet, uh, if it were a flat earth, it should be roughly 2,000 miles larger around. Oh, yet if it was your presupposed flat earth map that you have deduced your metrics from? Okay. That's oh, retarded. Yeah. No map. No map. Okay. It has nothing to do with yours not being real, McToon. Uh, well, it works. And uh, the, this uh, this flight chart. Oh, it's kind of covered by your thing there. Oh, my flight charts that uh, did a uh, for flat out hero was, uh, was a good one. I still got them on the wall there. And the model work. works because it was all derived from the observations. Exactly. Okay, so they work important. and it's a sphere. So, okay. Um, this is embarrassing. Got? 940. So. I think we've pretty substantially dismantled your religion in lifetime on them. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Oh, hold on. Uh, Austin incompletely explained GPS by saying Satalunes which are passive reflector satellites. Can he finish explaining how the rest works? 99% of transmissions come through wires and underground towers, or underground uh, wires. Uh, uh, why, that's wires, that, that's transmissions. That's not GPS. That's different. Okay, you can triangulate the position with the transmissions, Mattoon. The, the transmissions, so that the wires, the, the fiber optic cables going underneath the oceans, we can triangulate how? I don't know, and I also don't know how that makes the Earth a ball. Okay, okay. It doesn't. Um, well, if satellites are orbiting the Earth, and they are in the location that this, the GPS receiver gets, then uh, then that's tough because it's a three-dimensional space. So. Well, I just explained to you about the satellites. Okay, I'm not going to sit here and explain to you all that you haven't even researched it, and I'm biased, or you're a shill. So either way, I know I, this isn't my job to teach you, man. Okay. Hey, like, I, I want to be a shell. How do I apply to be a shell? Like, where's the reason? The, not, the reason I'm saying this? that, bro, is because you're not being honest, bro. I gave you a fair opportunity. You've proven yourself to just be into intellectually dishonest this whole time, bro. It's exhausting. So it's all good. Do you have any more questions? I think we've pretty sufficiently uh, one, handled this. All right, I'll give you one more. Um, is is Bob from Globebusters an engineer? I don't know. As far what as I about. know. Okay. Why, why, why is someone bringing up? I, okay, y'all, are, y'all are pathetic. Um, all right. Anyway, I'm. I think this is this has been pretty sufficiently handled. I've answered your little trollers questions from the Tune Squad. Uh oh. Um, let's see. Pageos one. P a g e o s one was a satellite that was used to measure the shape and size of the Earth. Thank you, Stringer News one. Interesting. Should look that up. Um. Oh, all right. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, I think we can we can probably uh, wrap it up here and and move on. Thank you for your time, Austin. Thank you to uh, to your audience for um, for listening. Um, maybe you can uh, peruse some of the the evidence that I uh, put up on my website there and uh, see see if there's any truth to that. So. And uh, with that. Um, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna 
disconnect here and I'll talk to my audience a little bit and you can do what you want. So sound good? Yeah, man. All right. Thank you. We'll we'll catch you later. Yep. All right. Well, there it is. We had an interesting time. Um, <laughs> um, lots of presupposition accusations from him and um, a whole lot of presuppositions from him. So as I, you know, as we knew, it, no, no surprise there. So let me look. I'll look at some of these uh, super chats here um, uh, <laughs> from 3Ron. Let's see. Then, yeah, I, so I, there's a ton of questions that came in quick. I tried to get to the, um, uh, do you, um, hold on. Sorry, lots of people <laughs> messaged me during the debate. I'm like, I can't focus on, on anything else right now, so sorry. Um, let's see, three, Ron. Austin has zero idea what a humble is. Uh, $2 from No Doubt, Flurf triggered from the get-go, lol. Um, three round again. A third grader is more intellectual than Austin. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, five dollars from just laughing. Austin is proving that he has a great addition to Bob and Jerry's Globusters team, and no science slash no evidence slash no clue. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's a great. Here's this is their map. This is this is really what they 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 took right. Um, in that in the the video. I, 16 nautical miles between each line of longitude and Bob Nodell didn't catch that. Oh, so silly. Uh, Stringer News 1 for $5. People, oh yeah, people can't figure out it's mc.mic. Uh, GPS for 2. Austin, what does GPS work? Uh, Luke Filewalker is a new member. Welcome to Einstein. Thank you very much, Luke. That's awesome. Um, end Flat Earth. Oh yeah, Luke, there's um, a couple things. I, I need to post that, but... Um, Sometimes during debates, I have a camera right here, and you can see my bingo sheet, which I did get bingo, by the way. Um, I'll go over that in a second here. Uh, and you can, I, and last time I did a debate with Modern Day Debates, I had that, um, just that little video going, just for members. So, and Flat Earth for $2, the, the Flurf is a cult Muppet. Uh, no Doubt for $2, someone buy Austin a sandwich. John Everyman for four ninety nine. Keep on crushing this guy. Go Team Globe. Thank you very much. Um, and Flat Earth for two dollars. Flat Earth is hashtag Flat Earth is dead. Um, Mike seventy one, a new member of Newton. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, good to have you. Um, King Kong Sex Dungeon. Yes, Austin. Naughty. That's not. <laughs> I don't think he looks quite as as methy as you know, for example, Team Skeptic. Right? Because right so all right holy cow i got <laughs> oh, so many people people like sending me messages <laughs> i'm sorry like so much where do meteors come from if there's a container it's a good one joey thinks it's chunks of the container austin how about the celebrities faking their death yes all right uh Peter must prime for a two Australian dollars. Austin, what is a straw man fallacy? Oh, I, I didn't ask him that. And, and yeah, I don't think he, I don't think he knows. Um, Curtis Reynolds for five asking the internal angles of a triangle. Um, Tropic of Capricorn from Stephen Smith. Stringer News one. Uh, he skipped over this GPS. He thought it was, he, he said there's wires under the ocean and there, there are some wires, but it's mostly fiber optic cables because it's so much higher. Um, bandwidth. <laughs> uh, let's see. We got Stringer News One talking about the Sataloon for five dollars. We got NANA -A -N -A for six dollars sixty six. Hail Santa. Austin Wish Witsit is a D O U C H E bag. Yeah, you make it. You make a compelling argument. Um, Mr. Unite for the Children for two dollars is hashtag Toon Squad. Yeah, he called me Toon Squad. I thought maybe I'd get like a, a Space Jam theme or something. I just didn't like get to it for the background or something. Um, zero one three two one three two for six dollars and sixty six. Hail Sagan, good old Carl Sagan. 
What's the independent variable for pressure meeting a container? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, um, uh, let's see. Marco. Oh, my goodness. H-R-V-O-J-I-C. Mm. I don't want to say it wrong. Hervojic? Um, yep, sorry if I got it wrong. How much, how, uh, how you have so much nerves. Good job, by the way. Yes, thank you very much. Um, let's see, we got Med Chiller saying, I got wrecked and it was embarrassing. Um, if, if you, if you say so, yeah. Oh, I've got the, the Rider of Dinosaurs shirt here. It says 10 to the negative 17 is a, is a, uh, negative number. Uh, yes, thank you, Beach 8. Um, <laughs> on the stream it looked like I could reach out with my right hand and knock his hat off then again I wouldn't do that I I would I'd do that um, oh quit asking me to sprinkle them titties uh, is a new member thank you very much for that uh, such a silly name I like it I mean I'm 13 years old right here um, uh, my birthday's coming up I'll be 13 again so uh, <laughs> George Natchik. Let's see, what do you say? Every show should begin with stating Bob Nodell is not an engineer. He is an idiot. Yes. E equals MC Tune confirmed. Yes. Oh, I, I have a... I, if somebody... I really... I tried to do like a, a Photoshop E equals MC Tune looking thing and I just used the font that was the chalk font and it just looked like every other font chalk. I didn't like it. If somebody wanted to do an e equals MC tune looking thing, like I don't know, that'd be cool. Send it to me. Uh, quit asking me to sprinkle them titties. Says we're all thirteen on the inside. Yeah, we are. Uh, <laughs> so now here's what's going on. Uh, I'll show you this. I got um, bingo. What we got right here at the top. We got dome or firmament. We got demand proof. We got incredulity, of course, the free space. You got dismissing evidence outright. You got bad math. Of course, bad math where they cal calculated the geometric horizon, not the apparent horizon, which would be what you'd see and not what, you know, so. Uh, how is it possible the stars in the north-south hemisphere to rotate in the opposite direction on a flat plane? It's the one question they have no answer for. Yes, and I know what he's going to say, right? He's just going to deny. It's gonna, I don't need to answer that. Of course you do. People, listen. Flat earthers that are still watching. If you're going to try to propose a model, which is what you're doing, as soon as you say it's flat, you have a model. You need to have a model that matches all observations, everything, right? So you need to have the el the angular elevation to Polaris needs to work. The angular elevation to the South Celestial Pole needs to work. Um, you need to have an explanation for the downward force. All these things you need to have. You can't just say, oh, it looks flat to me, therefore it's flat. And that's the, the, the truth that I'm revealing of the universe. No, it, it contradicts everything else. You need to have something that matches everything else. You don't. So in the end, we just kind of laugh at you. So, because it's silly. Um, all right. In nine minutes, I'm having round two of tonight's debate with Flat Ferdinand. And uh, he was the one that actually... Um, uh, he, he's the one that um, we had the, the airplane thing zzz, 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 all over the place with the FDFE. So it should be fun. Um, and he was actually me messaging me during the debate because he thought he got the time zones off. So um, that's it. I'm going to um, end this. I'll put in the, 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 the chat or not, the, um, the link to it. So let's see your channel. No, no, no. Where is it? 229 watching. Oh my goodness. I didn't even look. There's a lot of people watching. Thanks everybody. That's cool. Um, <clears throat> Nodell recently stated ley lines are important to QRP operation. I don't know what QRP is. What a moron. Ley lines are fantasy lore, yes, and if it did exist, the magnetic field would not affect RF radio wave propag propagation. QRP operation. Don't know what that is. Thank you, Iron Tusk, who says I'm awesome. Hit, <laughs> hit them likes, 228 people, yeah. 
Thank you. So, all right, let me, I got to get this. Uh, I have too many tabs open, of course, as always. Videos live, and then here it is. Flat Ferdinand. He, <laughs> he was, he's funny. Um, there we go. Here it is. How you doing, Marcus Dresden? So there's the link. So at uh, 10 o'clock, so about seven minutes from now. So I'm going to need to go. I'm going to go to the bathroom, say hi to the family, and uh, I'll meet up with you again in a little bit. So thanks a lot. Make sure you hit the like. Thanks you to my uh, patrons and subscribers and uh, members. And if, if, you, if you want, share it around. That's all you need to do. If that's all you got, I'm happy with that. So there you go. Thanks a lot. Bye.